Welcome or welcome back on C squared. In this video clip, we're going to talk about uh, exponential function and how we use rigid transformation for graphing exponential functions. So, first of all, those are the, what we call the rigid transformation. So this is a general form, and these are for exponential function. Yeah, if you have 2x minus 3, you're going to move down. Right? 2x, 2 to the x power plus the I'm sorry, it's going to move. Ah, and so on. All, all these are rigid transformations. Well, let's see some examples. Okay. Here, you see on top right, we have uh, that table. So this one says y equals 2 to the power of x plus 3. And the parent graph is 2 to the x, right? And this new guy, this new equation, is going to be the same exactly like the parent graph. The only difference is going to be move up units. Let's see how the picture looks like. There you go. When you see it, the red one is the one we're looking for, the green one is the anger. Okay, the y-intercept 0 and 1 becomes 0 and 4. And the asymptote, right? The asymptote y equals 0 becomes y equals 3. Okay. Uh, pause the video clip and take a look to number 2. If you have something like that, then it is a wonderful job. You see the red graph is, yes, the one we're looking for. It's the same like the parent graph. Three to the x power the green graph. Just move one unit down. What about this one? Eh? This one, if we take a look again in this table, what we notice, we notice we're adding, so that will be moving left, right? So the parent graph is 2 to the x. And this one will be left three units. So let's see the graph. Let's see the graph. It's right here, and we notice this zero and one, the one intercept. It's not anymore one intercept, it's a point. Well, it's still an important point, I will say, negative three and one. Move three units left. Notice that the horizontal asymptote doesn't move, right? It moves only when you do up or down transformation, vertical translation. So pause this and take a look to number four. If you end up with this uh, graph and um, you could notice that transformation, that translation, right one unit, then you did a wonderful job. We can see that in the picture, the zero, one becomes one and one. Uh, and as I said, whenever you move left or right, these asymptotes stay the same. Okay. What about this one? Eh? If you notice here, yeah, the parent graph is 2 to the x. And what do we have here? We have two transformations. Right? This plus 3 here tells us it's going to move left 3 units. Minus 4 that tells us to move down 4 units. Like this, right? Again, we can take a look. This is the y-intercept of the parent graph, 2 to the x. This one is moved. This one is moved 3 units left. And for that, okay, this one intercept becomes now a point in quadrant 3, negative 3 and negative 3. Uh, and the horizontal asymptote, yeah, that one is going to move down 4 units, so it's going to be y equals negative 4. Yeah, this number here, it tells you always what the asymptote is. Uh, pause this one and take a look at number 6. If 
if you end up with this gap and this transformation, right? This minus one tells us one unit uh, right, and this plus one tells us one unit up. And you did a wonderful job. Let's see that in the graph, right? Pan and graph, the green graph, right? Three to the x, and move one right, one up. We get this point, which is one and two. Okay, the asymptote is going to move one unit up, right? Again, this is given by the plus one. But this one, a very interesting transformation. You have a negative in front of the exponential function. Okay, so the parent graph will still be 2 to the x. This negative, negative 2 to the x will be a reflection, reflection over x axis. And you're going to see that in the picture. Okay, 0 and 1, 0 and 1 becomes 0 and negative 1, a reflection, it goes going down. The asymptote is the same. The same for number A, right? The only difference the parent graph is to 3 to the x. Yeah, excellent. 3 to the x is the parent graph, and it is going to be a reflection over the x axis of the same idea as number two. Well, obviously, the points on the graphs are different, right? This is one and three or uh, negative one and negative three different than number seven. Other than that, it's the same transformation. What about these two guys? Eh? These two guys, really, you may want to take a look here where the negative goes with the exponent. That will be a reflection over y-axis, right? So the parent graph is 2 to the x, and the uh, reflection, as I said, is over the y-axis. Okay. So let's see how the graph looks like. Okay, this is how the graph looks like, uh, and you see the reflection over the y-axis. Now, if you notice, that is a decay. Why? Because you can change that in a positive exponent using one of the rule of exponents, and we can really see that decay in this one. Okay? The same for number 10, right? The paragraph is y equals 3 to the x, and this one will be a reflection over the y-axis. This one being y equals 3 to the negative x bar. What about this one? Okay. And this one we notice that we have a negative in front of the uh, exponential expression, so that would be a reflection over the x-axis. Also, we have a reflection over the y-axis. Look at here how the graph looks like, right? Double reflection. Okay, the same for number 12, because we have a negative in front of the exponential expression, we have a reflection over the x-axis of that negative or uh, the exponent is negative x, we have the reflection over the y-axis. So the same story like number 11. And this is what we call non-region transformation. These are the one that you can uh, uh, get a little bit confused, uh, but we can use the same idea, this is the parent graph, and then we have 2 to the power of x plus 3 minus 4. And this one will be a translation left 3 units and down 4 units. But this 3 in front is going to make the things different. Okay, so let's take a look at the picture, right? This is, this is 2 to the x, all right? Uh, the red one is equal to 3 to the is move um, three units left and four down, and we get this guy, and the, the y intercept because this guy, negative three and negative four, right, from zero and one, okay? And the blue one, the blue one is the one that is number 13, right? Number 13 is the blue one. Let me, let me change the color here. Now, this guy will be one that we're looking for. 
Now, how do I get that uh, bending that I mentioned I think before, right? Uh, this is bended inside. I would suggest you to use value like x equals negative 3 and plug it in. That will give you a good point, all right? Uh, so this this uh, negative three plus three becomes zero, right? Zero minus four, so we have here three, right? Because two plus zero is uh, one minus one, that will be two. So the point is negative three and two. Negative three, negative three and two. If I did not miss anything i'm sorry we did it's minus four minus four so negative one here so we have negative three and negative one i see that is this one so using more value you can get the idea of how the graph looks like beside using transformation okay the same for number 14 if you take a look you see three graphs okay the parent graph the green one right the uh, Red one. The red one is the one that you move one, one right and one up, and the blue one is the one where you bend the graph because of the two in front. Okay. If you enjoy this video clip, don't forget to click the like button down right and come back and see square for more math video clips. Thank you.